Y'all check it out. Look at the gorgeous weather today. Why is it every time I walk outside, something falls? I guess there's some weird energy. <laughs> but what is up, everybody? Steven with Bama Saltwater. I'm glad that you can join me today. We're going to head offshore, but first I got to go check on my pets down here. AKA what we're going to be using for bait today. But they're still good, so let's go check our pen. See all this little aerator? Creates little oxygen bubbles in there and we'll keep your bait alive. Let's get our bait pin out. I've been trapping these all week, waiting for today to go out. Oh. There we go. I have about eight to 10 in there, give or take. Perfect size pin fish. So this is gonna be the bait for today. Are these pin fish, they're very plentiful out here in the backwaters. So really good bait. Let's put them in there, Ingle. There we go. So those will be good until we get on the boat and get the live well going in the boat. There's a few ways to catch the pinfish. Since I live on the water, I set out a pinfish trap. You just bait it with some cut bait, throw it out there, let it sit overnight, and usually you'll get a few. But if you're at the dock or if you're on your boat about to go fishing, you can take your sabiki rig, which is a bait rig, a cast net, some real tiny hooks with just pieces of dead shrimp or fish bites on there and catch you those pinfish all day long. So we'll load up the boat and get to the boat ramp and probably see you on the water. That is a big old Freeman right there. This is just a left-handed Siegler small game narrow 40 pound line and then a seven and a half foot G Loomis heavy power rod. So I have our first volunteer. This is our, ah, he just jumped. Let me grab him. <laughs> I like to hook him right on that nose cartilage. Go side to side, just like that. Now we're baited up, ready to go. Let's get it down. So it's 90 feet of water right here. Most of these fish are sitting in about 50. So we're gonna drop it halfway down. Oh, and there's a bottlenose dolphin already. Yeah, one just ate it. There we go. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Finally. Golly. Beast. <laughs> gotcha, buddy. Get up here. There's my leader. Oh, yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah, man. That's a good snapper. That is a good one. Heck, yeah. Uh, get my gaff because my net broke. Here we go. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm after when I come out snapper fishing is one just like that. It bites hard. They're beautiful fish, in my opinion, and they taste delicious. And you see why he's called a snapper. He just tried to snap at my pinky. But that is a great specimen of one. Just to change it up some, I'm gonna take one of these Nomad Squid Treks. This is the 110 size made by Nomad Design. Same leader I was using before. Let's drop this joker down. Mm. There you are. Be something I can keep. Is that a cobia? Yeah, it is. A little juvie cobia. Pretty sure it's not a remora. Nope, that's a little juvie cobia. That's cool. He's got to go back, but that is awesome. <laughs> Calm down, buckaroo. I hope you get big one day. See that? That is not a remora. That is a lemon fish, cobia, lean, whatever you want to call it. See the spikes on the back of his dorsal fin? Really pretty colors. Let's release him and hope he can become a 100 pounder one of these days. Our cobia population is really hurting. They've recently changed the regulations. All right, buckaroo, go get big. <laughs> there he goes. That's cool. That's why I love jigging. You never know what you're gonna catch. I say that every time I come out here. Probably need to start making my way back. Is that not a gorgeous sight? I mean, calm Gulf of Mexico, sailboat, sailing, and a beautiful sunset. 
but I am happy with that one snapper I got and then I'll probably include some footage from another fishing trip and then I'll see y'all at home at the cleaning table. Oh, well, I was trolling. We got something. Cool. Not quite for sure what. I just stopped the boat. I need to get around this buoy. I was just slow trolling at Rapala x raft while I was talking to y'all and something hit it. Hey, that's cool. Yeah, little Bobo, Bonita. Which is not the same as the Bonita that you have on the Atlantic side. These are actually false albacore or little tunies. There we go. Come on. Let them wear down some. Oh, that's a nice one though. That was exciting and unexpected. So the sun's just now peeked behind the clouds. Oh, don't want to get hit by that joker but i was just trolling what i typically do while moving from spot to spot and that's one of these size 14 rapala x wraps but there's a nice little toonie i'm actually gonna let him go he's not in bad shape he's still pretty active and he shot off like a rocket <laughs> that was cool heck i might make another pass i just had this rigged up with some 44 pound single strand wire and i usually pull that size 14 x wrap behind the boat if i'm around some structure or moving spot to spot Smash. That ain't no Bonita though. That ain't a Bobo. Ah. Ah. Don't go around the buoy. That is not a little toony. Ah. Heck yeah, dude. That was epic right there. I believe we might have a king mackerel. Ah. Swimming towards me. Come on, took out some line for sure. Ah, let's see what it's gonna be. Let's just lay eyes on it. <clears throat> Man, <laughs> where are you? Oh, I think that's a nice king. Oh yeah, it is. Nice king mackerel. Boom, look at that. Heck yeah, I'm gonna take this one home. Make some king dip. Oh, he heard me say that. I was like, no, you're not. <laughs> this was awesome. There he is. Mm. Oh, you don't wanna come to the boat. <laughs> there we go. Come on. Get close, buddy. Ah. That's the hardest part, right there. Mm. Just getting them close enough to get. Oh, here he is. Got him. Heck yeah, that's cool. <laughs> wow. Oh, look at that thing on the extra with some wire. Heck yeah, man. That don't tell you he's a predator with them teeth and that sharp eyesight. I know I say that every time, but I just like to show y'all these things can be ferocious. Y'all, that thing puts in some work. I mean, awesome lure. Pretty nice king mackerel. Check that out. On the troll, on my way back in, I was like, might as well throw something out. It paid off. I'll probably make another pass and then work my way in. It's gonna be too dark to see for y'all. That's awesome. morning everybody whatever time you're watching this i know everybody watches from across the globe so it may not be morning for you but it's morning here in south alabama as you see behind me have the boat about to get it launched and we're going to head out in the gulf of mexico look for some tarpon and then maybe go finish off with some red snapper bit of wind this morning but check out old glory flying a little bit of wind got some yachts posted up that's a cool retro fitted tugboat or push boat but that's a great sight to see in the morning 
so now we're out in the Gulf of Mexico just right off the beach a little bit of chop it's not too bad but I'm just gonna kind of troll the beach very slowly not with any lures out but just looking for signs of life I haven't found any tarpon yet but I have found a school of bait fish and it looks like some Spanish mackerel I'm gonna throw around a size 14 X wrap see if there's something bigger hanging below them oh there's a fish mm. <laughs> Caught one at least. That's always fun. Mm. What are you, skipjack? Ah, it's a ladyfish. Poor man's tarpon. <laughs> That's actually a really good tarpon bait right there if he's a little bit smaller. He's good cut bait. I'm gonna save him for chunking in case I go snapper fishing. So I'll throw him in my bait tank. But that's a ladyfish. I came out a little deeper. I'm fishing in 100 feet of water. Got a little nasty storm right there. I'm gonna take this whole cigar minnow on a Carolina rig, drop her down. Yep, here it comes. Never had so many issues trying to hook a red snapper, unless they're small. Well, I just came out to 120 feet. I'm gonna drop down this Nomad Squid Trex. It's the 110 size. Ooh. I mean, on the way down, it hit it. Ugh didn't even have to work it mm. what are you nice fish uh, it's a nice red here we go let's drop it down again I mean I didn't even have to work it on that one pretty far down there this one gonna be a keeper so there we go that's my limit these are the size i was looking for i catch a lot of big snapper but personally i like the ones that are just over the limit i'm gonna skedaddle before this uh big old thunderstorm comes towards me we're at the cleaning table that was a very rough ride back but i did manage my two snapper so i'm gonna make some fried snapper cheese grits so we're just gonna fillet these up it's a quick simple meal especially when you have a long day out on the water and in the sun Woo. and they're sharp <laughs> we're definitely sharp so when you get back after a long day on the water and you're hungry this is a very quick and easy way but a delicious meal as well so let's fillet them up i have my sword seven inch fillet knife link down below real easy snapper don't really have very thick scales unless you catch like a 30 pounder or 20 pounder like i've called earlier but these are a perfect size. So just take your flexible fillet knife, fillet the meat off the bone, get to the spine, go up and over. And you can cut it all the way off or you can leave that skin on the tail if you're not good at skinning. And then I like to fillet around the rib cage. I mean, it's that simple. So there's our small snapper filet. It's gonna be perfect for what we're making. Now they also have a collar that's delicious right here. See this throat? You got the rib cage that has a lot of meat in it. You got this head that I make a lot of soup and masala out of. But right now we're just working with the filet. I'm gonna skin this filet, hold in, work the knife, slide it back and forth. really really easy to do just like that now if it is a bigger fillet i would trim out all that red meat but that's not going to hurt you it's not going to be bad i'm going to do the same thing for this side of the snapper and then my other one and then i'll see you upstairs in the air conditioner we are in the house i have this filleted up snapper right here try it oh ono's making an appearance too you know dogs always love to eat scraps that fall down and ono is no exception what's up buddy <laughs> He just waved. Just, hey, he said hi to everybody. They all said hi back to you, man. But you kind of do need to move out of the way. Let me move him so he doesn't get burnt by hot grease and uh, we'll get to cooking. I have some peanut oil in a cast iron 
very shallow skillet here. So we're gonna fry our snapper. Already have some easy to make cheese grits with cheddar cheese right there. Those are super easy. That's the whole point of this video right now is when you get home, you wanna taste something good, but you also want it to be kind of quick when you're out on the water all day and pretty tired. I have a mix of some white lily cornmeal and a little bit of flour. Now all we're gonna do to season this mix is add some Tony's. Tony's is very salty, the original, so you don't really have to add much of anything else. Now I like to shake this up. All right. There we go. That's gonna be pretty dang good. I have this snapper in here and I have my peanut oil on medium high heat, just shallow frying it. You can see that heat. Wish y'all could smell that, it smells really good. It's gonna be about a couple minutes on each side and then they'll be ready. These are very thin fillets. Oh yeah, that looks good. Couple more minutes on this side and then we'll do the rest of ours. Oh man, look at that white and flaky right on our towel to let it drain and dry. And then let me get this other one. There we go. We're halfway done. That wasn't too long. So I have these two pieces of snapper that have cooled down. Now I'm gonna start plating them. Bring that over. We'll check that out. Perfect fish. Now I'm gonna come over to the cheese grits, grab a fresh spoon. There we go. Oh man, this looks so good. And dollop it right on top. If you don't want to put it on your fish, you can put it to the side. But I love this type of plating. It's just like a cream sauce. Same concept. So there's our cheese grits. We'll come over here and wipe that off. <laughs> Presentation's key a lot of times. So there's that. I have some freshly chopped green onions. A nice lemon wedge, and then some of that green onion together, just like that. And there is a completely plated cheese grits over red snapper with some green onions and a wedge of lemon. Look at that, that would be delicious in a restaurant. It'd probably be over $25 in a local restaurant here. And we went out and uh, spent a lot more money on a boat, gas, bait, etc. But the experience is priceless. So let's go outside because you know, beautiful view at my house. Always love to eat outside and enjoy nature. So I'll see you out there. Y'all, we're outside. What a beautiful day on the water. It is awesome being able to celebrate and be home for 4th of July. But I have some sweet tea. Roll Tide, y'all. We got Ono eating just what, doing what Ono does. And now it's time to try our fresh red snapper. Cheese grits. Some green onion. Here we go. Y'all, there's really no words to describe that other than absolutely delicious. I mean, the best way I can tell you this is so good is I gotta take another bite of that. I mean, red snapper is good on its own. We can only keep it during certain times of the year. I know you see me throw it back a lot, but uh, let me go ahead and get another bite. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. The cheese grits makes it. Now, I do have some lemon, that's just garnishing. I can put it in my tea or I can kind of squeeze it on the fried fish on the outside there. There's a lot of boat traffic behind me, everyone enjoying the beautiful weather. I'm gonna eat some more of this. I hope y'all can go make this at home. It doesn't take a lot to make. It was very quick, but you can see how good it looks. It tastes even better. <laughs> Everybody. I'm gonna have to let you go. Just wanna say, if you enjoy these Catch and Cooks, the channel is constantly growing. Go hit that subscribe button down below if you have not already. It's amazing to be able to share all these Catch and Cooks and fishing, boating, and the lifestyle down here on the Alabama Gulf Coast with each and every one of y'all. Once again, my name is Stephen with Bama Saltwater. I wanna thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us, and we'll see you later.